giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right, good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Infimidation. Uh, tonight, we will recap all four events that happened uh, week one here in Michigan, and we will also announce the Michigan top 10 teams uh, from the FRC top 25 poll uh, done over the last couple of days. And we'll also mention uh, what the host thinks should be done, or what, what the host should think the, oh, wow, I can't talk tonight, as well as mention <laughs> what the host think the top 10 should be. Uh, we'll have a little discussion there. And then we'll also preview the five events coming up here in week two. So reporting for first updates now. Uh, I'm Nick Cousins. Uh, I'm a for, uh, I'm a current mentor on 33, former student and mentor of 2451 Ponage, and uh, and then I'll just have everybody else introduce themselves. Um, hello, uh, I'm Sky um, Sky Leak. I'm a current mentor on 2767 Strike Force, and um, I came up to the program with uh, Team 876. I'm, uh, I'm Mike Schreiber. I'm currently mentoring 3538. Uh, for the past six years, I've been with Team 67, but I uh, left my job at GM, and that kind of makes it hard to mentor them. Uh, so I'm an uh, alumni of Team 27. Uh, I'm Tanner. I'm the new face around here. Uh, I go to Michigan Technological University right now. I'm an alumni and founding member of FRC Team 5460 Strike Zone commonly are confused with strike force. Uh, I currently help mentor uh, team 857 Superior Robo Works up here in Hoven. All right, so before we get started, we're going to have Tyler uh, talk about tonight's giveaway for the show. So Tyler, take it away. Yep, we got a uh, giveaway from our friends at Swerve Drive Specialty. So if you're interested in winning this, it's the uh, short sleeve t-shirt MK2 module uh, on there. It's got, this is pretty sweet, big MK2 module Swerve Drive right on the back of it. Uh, so super cool. Uh, make sure you go check out Swerve Drive Specialties. Uh, uh, people from 2910 Jack in the Bot are good friends out in the PNW. Uh, help run this, and uh, you can win it later on during the show. We'll have a keyword for you to type in. Uh, all you got to do is do that. Make sure you follow the channel, and if you want to get five times luck, you know, we might rig it a little bit for you. Go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have that a free Twitch Prime sub or for just a few bucks a month. Help fund State Love Live and Independent. Join Foundation. Get some awesome benefits, including uh, if people don't claim giveaways, we give them away to our subs as well. So we'll be giving this away a little bit later on during the show. All right, so with that said, as always in Michigan, we have a lot to talk about, so we're going to jump right into it. Uh, Sky, what do you have for us uh, at, your, at the event you're covering? All right, so Traverse City. Uh, we started out with the favorites of this event being 1918, the NC Gears, and they came out strong. At this point, it was not a matter of if they would seed first, but really by how much. Uh, 1918 did not disappoint as they cruised through qualifications undefeated, winning all 12 matches. Most of their qual matches saw winning margins of greater than 40 points. Uh, at the end of quals, 1918 had a ranking score of 2.41. The next closest ranking score, only 1.83. Going into eliminations, it looked like the number one alliance of aforementioned 1918, the NC Gears from Fremont, uh, 3572 Wavelength from Norton Shores, and... Uh, 5247, the Red Devil Robotics from East Jordan, had this in the bag. Quarters proved easy for this alliance, and semis were closer with a 28 and 10 point winning margins, respectively. Um, quarters, uh, let's see, well, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, now, of course. We've got finals. Uh, number one came out uh, swinging pretty hard, uh, winning the first finals match 
167 to 114. And then the powerhouse of 1918 collapsed a little bit. They became dead on the field. Uh, obviously, this did not bode well for the number one alliance. And the number two alliance of 6087 Cybertronic Lancers from Ellsworth, 7160 Luddington Obots from Take a Guess, and 5504 The Loose Connections uh, from Pinkening took the second match, 146 to 72. Now, of course, it's do or die for both alliances in finals number three. But after 30 seconds, 1918 was not up to their previous level of play that they had through quals. Uh, highly unfortunate, uh, as they had, had such a dominant performance into finals. Uh, they ended up losing finals number three. The winners, of course, were uh, 60, 78, Cybertronic Lancers, 71, 60, Luddington Obots, and 5504, The Loose Connections. This left the finalists of the number one alliance being 1918, the NC Gears, 75, uh, 35, 72, Wavelength, and then uh, 5247, Red Devil Robotics. Chairmans went to, not particularly surprising, uh, 3618, the Petowski Palatins from Take a Guess, as they landed uh, that Chairman's Award relatively easily, which isn't particularly surprising given their efforts in previous years. Well done, guys. Engineering Inspiration went to 4377, Boyne City Blaze from Take a Guess. Uh, good work, guys. And then the rookie All-Star uh, was claimed by an Everybot team of 8041, Lake City Ultrabots. Uh, so, Mike, what was happening in uh, Kettering 1 last week? So, in the first Kettering district um, of this year, 2337 went undefeated, um, average of two and a half ranking points, picking up the... Uh, the bonus climb ranking point in half their matches, and securing the first seed with their 1717 throwback robot with the double intakes and the swerve. Um, they picked the fourth seeded team, 27 Rush out of Clarkston, and rounded out the alliance with an Everybot 8368 Red Eye Robotics out of Flint. Um, with Nerds playing the long game while Rush took cleanup, um, the number one seed marched undefeated through uh, up until finals. Um, they took on the number three alliance of 5084 Fridgebot out of Corona. Uh, 3535 Galactech Invaders from Lapeer and 5238 Falconators from Otisville. Uh, finals one, uh, it looked like it might be close, but 5238 lost comms and, and missed their climb, resulting in a, a 150 to 107 victory for, for the number one alliance. Um, finals two, they, uh, the balanced triple climb that got the number three alliance past the number two alliance in semis couldn't overcome the 35 balls put up by the number one alliance, um, resulting in a 183 to 148 victory. Um, this event was just dominated by the nerds. They, they set a new single event district points record of 83 district points. They picked up the chairman's award, undefeated number one seed, uh, the, the, alliance, the, uh, the win, and the safety award. Uh, so, so you can't score more points than that. Um, this also puts Rush in their second year winning Kettering 1, which uh, is a good streak for them. They weren't doing so well in week ones before the past two years, so it's good to see. Uh, EI went to 7166, Red Thunder Robotics out of Langsburg, and uh, the Rookie All-Star went to 8385, Metal Madness out of Mount Morris. The, uh, the team and the school and the sponsors from that team look a lot like 6086 from Ignition, so I'm curious what the story there is. Uh, Nick, you want to take us from Southfield? I can, yeah. And Mike was actually uh, there with me this weekend, this past weekend. So Southfield kind of going in, uh, you know, 33 and 35-38. Uh, I mean, many considered to be the favorites. Uh, they had actually won Southfield together um, the last two years in a row. Um, so, you know, they were kind of the default favorites coming in. Um, but it actually ended up being 41-30. Uh, the Blue Devils from Richmond, who would end up seeding number one, they kind of got into the number one seed early and they never really looked back. Um, they kind of held on to it. Well, uh, they ended with a 2.16 ranking score. So not quite as high as some of the other events. Um, there wasn't quite as many climbs, I think overall happening in Southfield as maybe some of the other events had. Um, but they ended up seeing number one and they would go on to pick uh, 3538 throw jackets from Auburn Hills. And uh, they would also later get uh, 7191 at the ABT Gators from Melvindale. Um, and this alliance generally was, uh, you know, really strong. Uh, both 4130 and 3538 were probably the two most consistent shooters uh, throughout the entire event. So it was kind of no surprise to see them pair up 
on the number one alliance and really not have a lot of issues kind of working their way through eliminations. Uh, the only issue I think they had, and obviously Mike can speak more with this to this uh, as he is a member of 3538 now, but I know they, they had an issue where they hit the shooter on the underside of the control panel and that kind of threw off their shooting uh, in the middle of eliminations, but it looked like they ended up having it, getting it figured out by finals. So then if you, uh, if we go to finals, then you can kind of tell they got their shot back on. They went back to kind of nailing all their shots and uh, really cruised to uh, a pretty good victory. So 41-30 uh, ended up going undefeated on the weekend. And uh, so, yeah, and the finalists ended up being 1481, the Riveters from Farmington, uh, 548, the Robo Stangs from Northville, and 2591, the Red Tails from Detroit. Um, so that finalist alliance was still pretty solid. I think there's a lot of potential uh, from both 1481 and 548 to definitely uh, improve on their performance from this past weekend, uh, especially I thought 548 definitely was showing like, you know, they're going to, like last year, I remember they kind of started slow, but then by states, they were obviously really good at states. So I could kind of see that happening again this year. Um, chairmans ended up going to 1481, the Riveters. So congratulations to them. I believe that is their first chairman's win as a team. So they kind of got the uh, the silver gold cling bing with the finalist finish and chairmans. And then 5577, the kinetic, uh, the kinematic wolves from Detroit uh, got engineering inspiration. And the Rookie All-Star Award went to 8179, the Robo Falcons from Dearborn. Special shout-out to them. Uh, my former boss actually is one of their mentors, so uh, cool for them to to win that. So, uh, Mike, I don't know if you want to talk about kind of anything you noticed happen at uh, Southfield. Obviously, you won, so congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so I've been asked probably by a dozen people over the past two days if 4130 is the real deal. Uh, and and they really won on merit, right? They had a really tough schedule. They faced the Bees, the Riveters, uh, the Robo Stangs, and 35-38 twice in, mm -hmm. in qualification. So it was no cakewalk for them, and, and they beat us both times. Um, the other interesting fact, you talked about not enough uh, not enough climbs at the event. Southfield's the only district this weekend that um, in Michigan that didn't have a triple climb. Yep. Um, and it was possible for some of the alliances. 573 had the buddy climb. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the number one seed, 7191, uh, they're the third robot. They, they had potential to climb, but we never needed it. Um, other other interesting fact, the, the Bees have won their first event since since 2010 um, every year, and this, this finally broke the streak. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, we just uh, we just had a lot of – we built a very ambitious robot this year, and, um, you know, we just didn't quite have everything figured out in time for the event, um, you know, so we have some things to work through. We think we have a lot of potential still. Uh, we expect to be very improved by uh, Belleville uh, in week three, but – but yeah, I mean, but that doesn't that doesn't take away at all from 41:30 or or 35:30. I mean, 35:38 shooter, right? I mean, it was incredibly impressive. You, I mean, you guys were hitting like all your shots and Blue Devils as well. Um, I, I think the Blue Devils. I think if they can find a way to improve their intake, I think they're really going to take that next step from where they're already at now um, to being like a really dangerous uh, team for the rest of the season. So, so overall, you know, Southfield's it's kind of always the same way. It's usually like a pretty high top end, and then it can kind of drop off a little bit. Um, so this year wasn't a whole lot different, but I think there was still a number of teams that showed a lot of potential uh, to be really strong uh, competitors later in the season. So, uh, all right, so moving on to uh, the next event. Tanner, what do you have for us from uh, the new event this year, uh, the MCC event? Yes, so like you said, uh, MCC is new to the kind of event scheme. It was brought up because a lot of teams were missing out um, on kind of their second event. So anyway, I feel that it proved to have a very strong event throughout where uh, several teams in which I think could have finished the top of the rankings. Uh, at the end of it, it was 1188 that finished at the top of the pack, followed closely by 35-39 and their Robo Wrangler. Um, also on top of that, I believe uh, 3641 and 1718 had some both very impressive um, cycle times with their high goal shooters running back and forth between that uh, the port and the loading zone. Uh, this was the first ever Michigan District event to feature not only one, but two teams from out of state. Uh, the first being from 135, uh, Penn Robotics from Indiana, and 772 Cyberbytes from Ontario, Canada. Oh, you said 772. They're going to be upset. Oh, is it 772? All right, 777 who? 772. Oh. Tisk tisk. That's right. They're from, they're from out of the state, though. So maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> them only, them only. Uh, uh, another first, at least for me, I don't know if this has been seen before, but saw a rookie team comprised of only a single freshman student and his mom. 
uh, this being Team 8380, uh, the Clarenceville Trojans. By week four of the build season, they had 12 students, and they had diminished just to one, Austin. However, determined to see the season through, Austin pressed on about getting a working robot in preparation for his week one event at MCC. Austin paired up with Team 2832, the Livonia Warriors, and with their resources and help, that allowed Austin to not only build a functioning robot, but a competitive one as well. With nothing more than a kit chassis and a prototype climber provided by 2832, this posed no problem for the freshman driver, as he was able to uh, provide some debilitating defense at the end of quals, and then also that uh, high climb. Uh, at the end of the quals, though, Austin saw himself as the highest rookie seed at the event, and this display of defense and climbing ability was not overlooked. Once the dust settled in the limbs, the finals saw the third seed alliance composed of Alliance Captain 5436, the Cybercats, 1718, the Fighting Pie, and Austin, or Team 8380, the Clarenceville <laughs> Trojans, facing off against the first seed alliance captain by 1188 Ravens and their partners 3641, the Flying Toasters, and 7762 Autopilots. The first match, it looked like uh, 1188 had some possible drivetrain issues or control issues. They kind of um, stalled out in the field a little bit. Looked like they're having a hard time getting over that middle bump. So their backup came in uh, 5066. But at the end of the day, um, it came down to the third alliance winning it, winning Austin, his first blue banner, being a rookie team, and then also uh, Cybercats as well, their very first blue banner. So winners go to 54-36, the Cybercats, like I said, 17-18, the Fighting Pie, and 83-80, Clarenceville Trojans for Austin. Uh, finalists go to 11-88, Ravens, 36-41, uh, the Flying Toasters, 77-62, um, Autopilots, and their backup bot, 50-66. As for Chairmans, goes to 17-18, the Fighting Pie, 36-41, the Flying Toasters, got engineering inspiration. And for Rookie All-Star, Goes to 83.98, the Mandalorians. Recap: I feel like a lot of teams uh, underperformed at this event. A few teams, um, obviously, reigning world champs, 217. They kind of have a slow year um, every season that I've seen so far. So looking for them to kind of step it up coming in. Um, 302, strong season last year, and then also 910. Um, had also a great season last year. So a lot of these teams, I feel like, really put into gear their next couple events coming up and definitely looking forward to see good things from them. I was going to say, I was I was kind of surprised by by 9-10 just because they, so, they were so good last year, especially mm -hmm. by the time they got to States and Worlds. And to see them not even um, not even get picked yeah, not even make this past a team. weekend was really surprising. So they're going to need a really strong finish at their second event to actually make state championship this year. Sure. So hopefully they can figure that out. Yeah, they're they're a team that always starts rough but gets it together though. So uh, I expect them to to bounce back at their next event. Um, yeah, same with same with Thunder Chickens, like like he yep, said. Yep. Uh, another cool thing that happened this weekend overall in in FIM for districts, we had a we had three generations of teams uh, winning mm -hmm. events. Twenty seven started seventeen eighteen, and seventeen eighteen started forty one thirty. <laughs> so yeah. so it, it's funny how it all goes full circle, and and the successful teams um, really really uh, pass it on. And I think uh, from our survey that we posted a little bit earlier, it, uh, you guys, all the viewers, you guys said that you thought uh, the MCC event uh, was actually the strongest. So uh, kind of with all the info that, that Tanner just went over, it kind of makes a lot of sense. I, I think I probably agree with that, especially going, going into the event, it definitely seemed like the strongest. There were a lot of teams actually that were originally signed up for Southfield and uh, you know, 1718 was originally at Southfield, 910 was originally at Southfield. Obviously, maybe 910 didn't perform to everyone's expectations. Uh, but those two teams, I know, they were at Southfield and they kind of switched over. I think there were, might have been a couple others as well. So it ended up being like this event where that you know got planned at the last second, but then suddenly like all of these teams went to it, and suddenly it became really competitive. So, uh, and I was there Thursday night. I think Southfield, uh, Southfield had an issue with a snow day on Thursday, so they yep. ended up telling us that we could go get inspected at the MCC event for Southfield if we want. And so we actually went to the MCC event Thursday night. I know there were some teams like, why are the bees here? This is weird. <laughs> so, so I figured it was like, what did they switch to? So it so we there, caused it a like, huge amount of panic. Yeah. Well, but, uh, but yeah, but the, I thought the venue looked really good. Everyone, everyone I talked to said the venue was really nice that it, it worked out really well. It seemed really spacious. So 
Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe if they continue to just have an event there every year going forward, uh, I think it'd be a great event. So, uh, all right. Uh, before we move forward, I think Tyler has a quick sponsor read for us for uh, the sponsor of tonight's show. So, Tyler, what do you got? Yeah, sponsor sell time, guys. Let's check out our friends from <laughs> uh, Striker. S T R Y K E R. So, guys, you know about Striker. Uh, great company, great place. Uh, if you're interested in getting an awesome internship co-op or job and they got a huge uh they're actually headquarters out of kalamazoo they're all over the world so no matter where you are there's a job for striker right there for you um man their facility is so cool you got to check it out if you're looking for internships by the way uh they'll pay for your housing which is super cool you probably even get to see all the sneak peeks of 2767 i don't know sky you can, you can see uh... We hide things pretty good. All right. I think so, we can attest to that. Yeah, I know. When I went over there, they actually put stuff in the trailer, and I just, you know, got my little wrong, camera out. Wrong. Open it, it down. In the and, closet. Where was it? It was in the closet. Oh, whatever. So, well, <laughs> guess what? If you're, if you're an intern, maybe you get to see Strikers real bad. Come or on, Strike Sky, Forces sell real it. Yeah, yeah come on, Sky. Come on. Get the cell Hashtag sponsor read. All right. Uh, but, guys, once again, go check out Striker. S-T-R-Y-K-E-R. Look at all the awesome jobs they have. You can go to careers.striker.com forward slash first if you want to see stuff that's tailored for those in first. But, once again, phenomenal company. Go check them out if you're looking for uh, a place that actually supports you being in first. Super cool. S-T-R-Y-K-E-R. That's Striker. <laughs> you sound like you're doing the uh, the Mickey thing. Dude, song. Adlib is strong. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, Striker. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Marty guys. says, go to Striker. All right, let's move on. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep going no, if, no, you, no. Uh, if you let me. So. No, mm, Striker, go to yes. Now, now, now okay. it's time right. for our I... countdown of the top 10 teams in Michigan from last week's competition, <laughs> voted on by you, the fun community. In the FRC top 25 polls. Sorry, I had to just cut Tyler off there. <laughs> uh, while we save where any of these teams finish in the overall top 25 for later tonight, uh, we will discuss the top 10 vote getters in FIM. We also show the, uh, what the hosts of the Infimidation show think these teams should, where these teams should land on an overall list. Uh, so what are everyone's thoughts about this list? Uh, we got in, in number... In the number 10 spot, we got 1481, the Riveters. Uh, number 9, 1188, uh, Ravens. Um, number 8, 3641, the Flying Toasters. Number 7, 33, the Killer Bees. Number 6, 27, Rush. Number 5, 1718, the Fighting Pie. Number 4, 1918, NC Gears. Number 3, 4130, Blue Devils. Number 2, 3538, the Rebel Jackets. And number 1, 2337, the Engine Nerds. Uh, frankly, I'm not surprised to see the nerds on top. Uh, they had a huge amount of hype uh, rolling into week one, and while they might not have been um, completely flawless uh, this weekend, they had a lot of performance uh, to back it up. Uh, and that robot, frankly, is is eye candy. Um, so that helps, too. Uh, to be fair, though, I was a little surprised to see 1718 come out with the full head of steam that they had. Uh, last I heard uh, through the rumor mill is they were a bit behind on schedule on their builds. So coming out so strong is pretty good. Um, I definitely feel like uh, 1718 is a team with a that has a high performance cap this season. So we're going to be seeing a lot more out of them. Yeah, I, uh, I think I agree with that. Um, I, I thought, um, obviously, the Nerds had a great event. Uh, that said, I'm not sure I would have had them as number one. Uh, I think we saw, we saw some really, really good shooting, uh, really fast shooting that was also accurate out of the robo jackets. So I might've had them above. Um, also, you know, the, the blue devils also, I mean, I, obviously I'm kind of biased cause I was at Southfield. So I saw them the most, <laughs> but they were really accurate. I mean, they were just really consistent. Uh, but the nerds were consistent as well. Um, I actually think, you know, I think we're a little too high, like, 33 is actually a little too high. Um, obviously, I think we have the potential to do really well, but I, you know, obviously, I think we missed the mark this past weekend. So I wouldn't have had us as high actually. Um, and from everything I've seen, it, it seemed like maybe the toasters should have been a little bit higher on the list. Uh, 1918 seemed really good as well. So obviously, there's a lot of good teams in Michigan. That's the way it always is. But um, I don't know, Mike. What do you think? So 1918 by far put up the most power cells in Michigan in Teleop over the. Uh, over the weekend, they they got a uh, 547 power cell points. The next highest was the Robo Jackets with 436. So they were 100 points higher than us. Um, so, but but they didn't win their event. So yeah, you can't put them in the number one spot. Um, 
So next, the uh, the next team, as far as power, tele out power power cell scoring, which I think is the best indicator of who's going to succeed at this game, because all these teams can climb, um, was thirty three twenty two, who got knocked in the semis uh, by a triple climb at Kettering. Um, so they're not. I, I expect them to be talked about a lot more this season. Um, I think the nerds are too high. They uh, they were only averaging seven point seven tele out balls in in qualifications. And their max was only 16. Um, 35, 38, and 1918 were putting up a lot more balls than that. Yeah, I mean, I think I agree with that. I think uh, in 33 to 22, I think from what I've heard, uh, they're working on improving their climber as well. Uh, they're actually going to be at Belleville uh, with us in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, I expect to see uh, even more improvement from what they've been at. So uh, I think they're going to be a team that a lot of people are going to sleep on just because they maybe haven't had that kind of level of performance in the past, but they might um, kind of be there this year. So, and, Tanner, and to clarify, that, that's uh, Eagle Imperium out of Ann Arbor. Yes. Yep. Oh. And, and Tanner, what did you think? Uh, personally, uh, I'm surprised not to see 3641 higher up, like someone had mentioned earlier. Uh, they had one of the more impressive autos I've seen, kind of all the throughout all the events. Um, it was a real quick during eliminations. It was a real quick uh, eight ball auto. Uh, on top of that, I have to agree with Mike that the performance are, or not uh, with everyone, uh, that kind of the performance put on by 33, not really deserving of that top 10 spot. However, uh, like you said, Nick, uh, this performance is only week one. So I fully ex expect you guys and them to kind of work out these issues. And by the time of their next competition, I'm sure we'll be seeing them back up here. So. Yeah, and I realize I misspoke. I actually meant to say uh, toasters are the ones who are going to be at Belleville in two weeks with us. Uh, 3322, I think, is at. Lincoln, maybe I can't remember, but but yeah. So anyway, but both of those teams I expect actually to get uh, even better than they already are. Um, so what we can do is we can take a look at kind of what we did is all of us on the show right now, and also some of our other hosts who aren't on the show tonight uh, of the FIM group uh, kind of made our own top ten, and then we kind of did a point ranking based on that, and Sky kind of calculated like an aggregate of everyone. So we kind of came up with our own top ten of what we thought it should be, and so if we take a look at that. Um, just making sure Tyler's got up on the screen. He does. Uh, so coming in at number 10, the Killer Bees, 33. So you can see we we dropped a few spots there. Uh, 548 actually jumped in at the number 9 spot. Uh, 3539, the Biting Bulldogs, jumped in as well into the number 8 spot. Uh, 2017, Rush dropped down from 6 to 7. And then you can see the Toasters moved up a little bit into the number 6 spot. 1718 is there at number 5. Uh, NC Gear is pretty much where they were at number 4. Uh, 4130, Blue Devils at three, 3538 at two, and Nerds uh, remaining at one. So the top not really changing a whole lot over our whole consensus, but you could see some new teams kind of moved in um, on the back end there and some other teams moved down. So uh, uh, what is everyone's thoughts on kind of how this ended up working out? Well, I was just happy to see that the first time we tried this as a group that we got the top five as the same as the community. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> if that goes to say anything, at least we're kind of paying attention here. And, and uh, Mike, you have any thoughts on that? I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have these on this list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Nick. <laughs> I, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Um, so I, I had I had thirty three twenty two in that spot. And I, I, I think they just got bumped for a for a tough uh, triple climb. Yeah, I think they kind of fell out just because semifinals exit. Um, but then again, like you had just said, 33 semifinals exit. Uh, well, so, but 35-39 had a semifinals exit too. It's all about the reveal video to get on, on the list. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think and, obviously name recognition has anything. To, I mean, yeah. it's, it is a popularity contest to a degree. For and, sure. You know, obviously, the more people that vote, the more uh, it'll. Well, don't actually... admit that. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I like I said, obviously we did not perform to our ex expectations at all, and you know so and I and obviously compared to a lot of these other teams, we did not you know we didn't play as well as some of these other teams, um, so I think it's completely justified. Um, so that's the way it shakes out. We'll see. I mean, part of it is like this is kind of like a power. It, every, I think everyone kind of votes different ways too, right? Like yep, some people yep. some people vote on it like a king, right? Where it's like who is at the current second the best yep. versus like some people were probably still looking at it like yeah but who do i think is realistically the actual yeah. better robot and who has of, the higher for the performance season? caps and right now so and you know some people would argue it's one some people would argue it's the other so yeah. that kind of plays into it as well um but yeah so so that's kind of where we're at but if everyone in the chat you can let us know what you thought where you think you know people were too high or too low um 
And yeah, and, and then you can see Tyler's got a poll going right now of which poll is better. Uh, oh, it finished, actually. Um, so uh, I don't know if we actually have the results of that poll. Uh, oh, it's screen. I'm an idiot. Okay, so there you go. So our, apparently we people like us better, but... You know, uh, but we still think it's really <laughs> interesting to look at what everyone thinks, and obviously we'll see what the whole top 25 for the whole uh, world looks like in uh, a little bit, in about 30 minutes. So, with that said, uh, Tyler, you want to start our giveaway for the night? Yeah, we're going to start, uh, once again, the giveaway from our friends at Swerve Drive Specialties. We're giving away this pretty sweet t-shirt, guys. If you're interested in uh, winning this, let's tell you a little bit about it. This is a high-quality t-shirt uh, that Swerve Drive Specialties uh, is about the Swerve Drive Specialties MK MK2 module. Uh, SDS MK2 modules have become the standard COTS FRC Swerve module. So visit SwerveDriveSpecialties.com. Check out more. I mean, buy the shirt if you want. And for the sword module, personally, I'm hoping that I win the extra small that's selected right now. Uh, but if you're interested in winning, uh, the keyword is just going to be uh, MK2. Type MK2 in the chat. Uh, that's your opportunity to win. Don't forget, you do need to be following in order to win. And if you click that subscribe button, you're going to get five times luck to win as well, too. Uh, so once again, MK2. And by the way, sizes looks like they have XS to double XL. Just a heads up. So we'll draw for that in just a few minutes. All right, so we are going to jump into our previews of our events coming up in week two. We've got even more events. We have five events coming up this week. So uh, Tanner is going to start us off with a preview of Jackson. Yes, so overall, Jackson seems to be a relatively young uh, event with nine rookie teams in attendance. There are two teams actually at this event competing for their second event, which I find kind of surprising, that being 5502 and 7197. Some top contenders coming into Jackson they're looking out, shaking out to be 862 Lightning Robotics, 1023 Bedford Express, and 2611 Jacktown Vectors. Some other things, um, some other teams that I think could make a splash: um, 5205 Full Metal Jackets and 5530 the Green Hills Lawnmowers. However, with a lot of younger teams in attending, I'm fully expecting to see some younger teams step up and solidify themselves as a threat on the field. As for Chairman's and EI, I've also got that going to 862. Lightning Robotics, and on top of that, also in contention, 3655 Tractor Technicians. And then rolling down, how's Kettering 2 looking, Mike? So at Kettering 2, we have four teams playing their second event, uh, none of whom did particularly well in week one. Um, the, the best one made semis. Uh, I my, my favorites for the event are the, uh, the Swerve duos of 1684 and 503. Um, we have a, a 1684 um reveal video to show if uh if tyler wants to roll that um but the other other concerns at the event i expect uh, 314 uh, big mo out of uh out of flint carmen dingsworth um 201 the feds 3534 house of cards uh 3667 um uh, and 70 more Martians, um, 50, 46, and, and 703. I, I'll expect them to do to do pretty well and, and make elims. But I, I think my favorites are definitely uh, Chimeras after seeing um, seeing their reveal and um, this cool Spindexer with double intake and swerve. Um, Sky, do you have any uh, any 2767 teasers to show us for Saint Joe? Um, not, not really, uh, to, uh, to, to share I can try. Here. Um, yeah, yeah, you can try. Uh, all right, I, I, so, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, because we still have the, uh, Tyler just took it on screen, but I was just going to say, I mean, I think the 1684 robot looks incredibly good. Oh, um, oh, yeah. And, like, I, I mean, obviously, reveal videos make everybody look good, you know, like, you mm -hmm. know, we looked great in our video, and obviously we were <laughs> underperformed. So, so you never it never tells you the full story, but like uh, that robot clearly looks like it has a ton of potential. Um, uh, a ton of potential. Really have a high ceiling. Balls. I don't see a beat up ball in that video at all. So the okay, the true. thing that I want to see in this is you don't see intaking balls and shooting them in the same frame, which just yeah. tells me that I have no idea if this thing jams or not. That, uh, fair. Fair. <laughs> All or right. if they just got the robot together like a day before when they filmed it like <laughs> yeah. we did. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, all right, so I'm going to roll into St. Joe here. Uh, so St. Joseph seems like there are more than a few perennial powerhouses from the get-go of the season. Uh, we have 2054, the Tech Bikes, uh, 3452, the Grenadiers, uh, 2767, Strike Force, uh, 3620, Average Joes, uh, 4003, the Trisonics. Uh, no matter how you slice it, um, the Alims will be interesting. Uh, uh, as we've said before, uh, 2337, the Nerds have managed to already pick up a Chairman's win. Um, so that kind of slightly blows open the, the whole Chairman's uh, contention. But we've also got the Hammerheads coming in who have a bit of a streak going. So maybe not. Um, I don't really have a 2067 uh teaser to show you. Uh, we want to come in with the biggest advantages and stuff we can, but I can tell you three things. We have Swerve. It's going to be a yellow robot. Shocking. And we're going to shoot a lot of yellow objects. Hmm. Parts of your robot. Got it. <laughs> well, you, you think you think they're going to shoot. Um, but another thing to uh, just note uh, with St. Joe, the limbs on Saturday afternoon uh, should be broadcast on ESPN3, so that That'll be fun. Um, but beyond that, uh, what do you have, Tanner? Yeah, so moving on, we've got Kingsford coming up. So Kingsford, this personally will be my first time ever seeing the event played out in person besides like practice fields where nothing actually real happens there. <laughs> um, uh, I'll be there with my team 857. So if you see me, see me, come f uh, feel free to say hi. Uh, anyways, moving on to Kingsford, uh, you'll be seeing an out-of-state team again, actually, uh, 2867, the Elk Logics from Indiana. And on top of that, there's one team they'll competing for the second time, that being Team 7790. As for rookies, Kingsford will also be hosting two of them. Some contenders coming into Kingsford are looking like to be 4391 Brave Bots, 4970 Ice Cubed, and 6569 Gladiators. Notable mention. Uh, one team that I personally think could be making some noise at this event is, of course, my team, 857. Uh, I know I'm biased, uh, but just looking at what their machine can do and looking at what their robot and their performance, but obviously, like, again, on practice fields, but just looking at the uh, performance of the robot, I think they can do really well. As for chairmans and EI contenders coming in, I see 3602 Mo, uh, Robo Mo's. They won it last year at Kingsford, but then not to be outdone, 3875 Redstorm Robotics also won uh, Chairman's last year as well. All right. And then wrapping up the week, we have uh, the Milford event, um, which uh, last year I remember I actually I, I went to go see it in person and I remember it being really competitive. This year looks like it will be maybe not quite as competitive, but still pretty competitive. Uh, quite a few uh, top teams. Uh, you know, this year we'll see the debut of uh, 67, which I think we uh, have a teaser of in a little bit. And then uh, our our last year's world champion, 3707. It'll be interesting to see uh, what they've come up with this year. And then I would also say uh, 4362, the Gens, uh, state champion last year. Uh, obviously, they're kind of one of those teams who they never do anything super flashy, but they always just have a robot that, that really just works. Um, so I would uh, look out for those three teams to be kind of the, the early favorites. But I would say other contenders at Milford uh, would be 51, Wings of Fire, uh, 36. Uh, 3536, uh, 4405, and 4776. I could see uh, a couple of those kind of uh, being strong potentially. And then Chairman's actually is going to be really competitive at Milford. Uh, we have two teams who won at the state championship last year, Team 66 and 4776. Uh, both of them won at Chairman's at the state championship last year. And then 1189. Uh, the gearheads have also won Chairman's the last couple of years at district events, so they're also a strong contender as well. So that'll be a very competitive award and uh so if we have the 67 teaser we can maybe take a look at that i don't know if tyler is prepared okay so let's take a look at the 67 teaser
All right. So looks like a cool robot from 67. I'm curious to see how well they do this weekend. Um, it looks like it might be a really good shooter. Um, the intake looked maybe like it's a little slow, but we'll, you know, could just be the video. So hard to, hard to say from a teaser, but uh, we'll see how they do. So uh, let's just a friendly reminder for anyone interested in that Swerve Drive specialty shirt to make sure you put in MK2. That's the keyword into the chat for a chance to win and make sure you click the follow button. And if you'd like a five times chance to win, make sure you click that subscribe button. And show uh we are going to do a couple discussion topics though uh so maybe just in general everyone can kind of say real quickly uh what do you guys think we learned in week one uh balls are going to degrade and we just have to deal with that <laughs> yeah yeah i mean um, they kind of we've heard I was just going to say, we saw some things today, I think, on Chief Delphi and stuff, saying that, like, everyone's confirmed that only 24 balls are getting sent to every new event, um, which, you know, I think we've all kind of learned, at least from people who are at Week 1 events, that that may not really be enough to keep up the con the consistent level of ball quality we've already seen, which was already not very good. Um, so it's definitely something to keep in mind. Mike, what were you going to say? Um, well, I, I really think the uh, the scale tips a lot more than I or the the switch tips a lot more than I ever thought it would um, we have a wood version at home and I it was a lot easier to balance on that thing we uh we fell off once yep. because we didn't expect it to swing so much and our hooks started twisting in ways we didn't expect so we had to reinforce them at the event um so be ready for that if you haven't played yet it's yeah, a lot we lighter we we uh, found it very difficult to actually be balanced when we were solo yeah. climbing. Uh, you had to be, you had to be like really your your center of gravity had to be really close to the center for it to actually stay balanced. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think I think week one really uh, opened everybody's eyes to what this event really is or the, how this game's really gonna play out. Now that they actually had like real field pieces, real um, you know steel structures and stuff like that. So just kind of a, a learning curve, if you will, for a lot of teams. And then maybe related to climbing, what, what do you guys think of the power of doing a triple climb? You guys think there's a ton of value there on being able to win matches? Yeah. And, or the limbs guess, in particular points. are just at the I mean, end of the limbs. Heck yeah. Yeah, look at MCC, right? They didn't score a single ball in Teleop, mm. and they won the event in, yeah. in the final match. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't compete with 90 points of, of hang. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... No oh, change by worlds, scoring that many balls. But, yeah. yeah. It'll change yeah, but, worlds, but yeah. Yeah, like so, like I know, you know, we ended up declining uh, the number two captain, 1481, uh, basically because we knew that we would probably, if we had, if we'd said yes, then we thought there was a good chance we'd make finals, but we we thought there was almost a zero percent chance we'd beat the number one alliance of Avondale mm -hmm. and um, and the Blue Devils, just because we knew they were so strong at shooting and everything, and we figured the only chance we had of winning that event was if we could triple climb, and that's why we decided to get with 573, because we knew they had the buddy climb, and then we could climb separate and maybe get the triple. Now, we didn't end up getting it pulled off. We got really close a couple times, uh, just a couple um, you know, things to figure out what how, what to do it in the right order, and and our climber wasn't great this weekend. Um, but like, I mean, that right there, if we had somehow been able to do it, like suddenly, you know, we felt like we could have gotten to the finals, and like the finals could have been very competitive, even though even though thirty five, thirty eight, and forty one, thirty were shooting so well, and like you said, MCC as well. So it does seem like it has a lot of value. Triple climbing in general is very um, yeah. point heavy this year. It can really, for uh, you know, pun intended, can really tilt the scales. Of an event, <laughs> uh, point-wise, yeah. where you can <laughs> you could be shooting a bunch, hitting lights out, but um, if you can't climb and the other team can, uh, like you guys said, that's just a lot of points coming in and could result in the match on top of RP during quals. So before we get to maybe a couple more quick topics before we end the show for tonight, we do have a behind the bumpers video uh, from this past weekend of the uh, like Mike said earlier, the number one score of uh, balls in FIM uh, 1918. NC gear, so we're going to take a quick look at that. Hi, I'm Steve Londo reporting for First Updates. Now I'm here with 1918 NC Gears. Uh, they're going to tell me about their awesome robot today. This is Eli, Jonathan, and Hero, and they're going to talk about their robot. Yeah, so we got uh, our swerve modules. We have it tipped up on the side so you can see them uh, if you had run them. We've got uh, our drive motors and then our, uh, our actual steering motors. We've got uh, pulleys pulling the whole module, right? And they all are linked up with our, our gyro system. Uh, everything was manufactured in shop, designed by us. We took ideas from a bunch of different places and kind of made an amalgamation of what we thought would be 
most important, you know, most effective for us. Also, what we've got it tipped up here on its side, you can see our, our pods, yeah. So anyway, with the, um, the bumps in the rendezvous point, they're really hard on our swerve drive. And so we made these, like, uh, plastic covers, which we also, also manufactured in shop. Um, we originally had them mounted to the swerve drive, so they'd turn with, this, uh, with the swerve uh, module itself. But if we don't line up exactly perfect with the, uh, with the bump, it would just mess up everything. They'd get broken and such. So we're like, okay, if we mount it to the actual frame, um, unconnected to the, the swerve drive themselves, they'll, um, it'll work a lot better, and it won't, uh, we won't have to replace them as often. All right, so I'm Jonathan, and I'll actually be talking about our shooter here. Um, do you want to run the shooter? So with our shooter, we have five wheels connected to a Neo, and then three small wheels connected to our mini sims. Now the Neo and the mini sims are both tethered together through code, and they actually run together. Now in front here, we have a free shooting wheel that the shooting wheels up here they spin together and they get actually full speed and then when we're ready to shoot and we're lined up properly we actuate this wheel up here that then fires it through the intake so that no matter what we are always getting the full potential of our shot and the full speed so we don't have as much play through first shots and then second shots so we don't see as much of a decrease or increase in the shot speed or accuracy um, back here we actually have our hood you want to run our hood so as you see here, our hood is actually er, connected to a cylinder. We have two set hood positions. We have a low shot for when we're all the way up against the wall. And then when we're in the initiation line, as Eli will show you, initiation line, our cylinder actually uh, extracts and we our hood position rises so that we have a more better arc for the initiation line shot. And if I don't know if you hear it, but when he hits the button, both of the wheels spin as the hood increases. So that is a very good programming technique so that we don't have to do as many buttons as once. So it's a lot more efficient and we don't have as much delays. So I'm going to turn it to Hero for the intake. Hi, I'm Hero and um, for our intake we have it so that it moves down with us. As you can see, it actually has three positions. So if you would put it at the middle position, please. That's the top position. It actually has three positions so that we have starting configuration, which is within our bumpers, and then down to pick up, and then in the middle so that we aren't getting hit. So our intake has two different rollers that are hooked together via a belt. The power cell gets pulled in with this bottom roller, hits the free roller and the bungee that's here, and the, to get pulled up to the top roller, which then goes into our hopper to be held. Uh, so we've got our three-stage elevator. It took a, a while to get it on. Actually, do you want to run that? Um, anyway, it's all done by a pulley system tensioning. We've got two motors on it um, running opposite directions, connected by a gear for extra strength so we don't, you know, so we can lift our whole robot. Uh, it's a really small kind of a system, but it's very effective. Uh, I think I said it's three stages, three stage elevator. We've got a um, gas, uh, a gas compression cylinder in here to keep it tense. Like this will flex down. It's in here. It has like a, a couple inches, I think like five inches of, you know, up and down. So when we lift all the way up, it still stays tensioned. And when we go um, back down, it pulls it into compression. And, the wires stay compressed. This wire we use is really good. Uh, once we tension it, it won't tension anymore. We got to run it a couple times, tension it a couple times, but after that, it's you know it's going to stay tensioned the rest of the season. Um, let's see. The hook. Yeah, we got our, our hook up here, right? It's just a really simple hook, but we added um, surgical tubing onto it so we don't slide. Because that was a problem we were having when we weren't perfectly balanced. We would just slide all the way to the end, and any hope we had of being balanced is, is gone. So we, uh, you know, zip-tied some surgical tubing to it, made the arc a little bit bigger, and uh, we haven't slid, I don't think, at all this competition. Um, yeah, I think that's it. All right, thanks, guys. This has been NC Gears 1918 out of Fremont, Michigan. I'm Steve Londo reporting for First Updates Now. All right, and the last quick discussion we're going to talk about is um, kind of some zone play versus cycles. And I know Mike had some thoughts on this about, you know, is it worth it to just run normal cycles? Is it worth it to kind of have a short bot and a long bot? 
uh, as far as shot distance. So, Mike, what were your, what were your thoughts? Yeah, we, we talked a long time about the uh, the behind the, the color wheel shot that the engine are executing this weekend. And, and some statistics on that. They were uh, in tele out there shooting about 47% of their shots. So uh, Rush had to play all the cleanup. And, and that makes me really worried once everybody else isn't missing and your opponent has a, uh, a fast pickup. Whereas uh, if 1918 playing the, playing the deep end and getting that flood going, they, they were putting up more balls than anyone else with that quick intake. So, but, but that's also zone play. We were running cycles. So I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. I think the game is definitely going to change as the season goes on. I think, you know, there's not a lot of defense this year. Uh, that might change, but I think what will change more is kind of how teams kind of split up what cycles they're running and, and how they're kind of splitting up the offensive play. So uh, with that said, Tyler, we should probably get our giveaway drawn because we're running on, out of time here. So uh, let's draw for the giveaway for the Sword Drive Chelsea t shirt with the keyword MK2. There you go. MK2 is the keyword. Last chance to get in. Uh, for that, and thanks again to Sword Drive Specialties for this cool donation. If you're watching live, by the way, the FRC Top 25 coming up in just a little bit where we have some more giveaways for you too. Uh, but with this, the winner is going to be uh, Martin4680. Not a sub. See, non-subs can Ooh. win too. But congratulations wow. to Martin4680. Uh, four, six, four, six, Please make sure you message first updates now either on Twitch or in our Discord. All right. So with that said, that is all the time we have for tonight. We always run out of time. Uh, but thanks for everyone tonight for hanging out with us and, uh, fun needs your help to stay loud, live and independent. So, uh, please consider giving us your support by joining the fun nation with a subscription or bits on uh, Twitch. You can use your Twitch prime sub. If you have your Amazon prime account linked or for like just a few dollars a month, you could, uh, become a, uh, a subscriber. Uh, you could also join our Patreon at patreon.com slash first updates now. Or just letting people in first know that uh, this is the place to be to get information about first and everything that's been going on. Uh, so don't forget to also check out our Discord, our YouTube, our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter, and of course here live on Twitch. Uh, also, fun fans, clips of the week are open again. So don't forget to submit your favorite or funny clips uh, from each week on our F on our fun Discord by Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern every Monday. And your your fa your favorite clip might make it into our uh, montage that is going to be airing tonight, right, Tyler? Yep, so uh, be sure to tune in for that. Uh, that. And overall, our FRC Top 25 show will be coming up next. Uh, so on behalf of Sky, Mike, Tanner, uh, our producer Tyler, and myself, I would like to thank everyone for tuning in, and thanks to all of our moderators in chat for keeping everything moving. Uh, like I said, our next show is Top 25, so uh, everyone stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot, and good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.